Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to episode 9 of the Back to Basics series where we're going to be covering Naval AI and its configuration. So we added this little fella in the last episode, but we didn't configure it at all. The first thing I like to do with ships is disable the reverse because they have a habit of getting themselves into a little bit of trouble this way. So it's normally a good idea to just keep them moving forward. We're going to explain some of the differences in what all of these settings do. Now a lot of them are self-explanatory, I mean depth requirement is a 10 meters, that means it has to have at least 10 meters before the AI will be allowed to path to that area. It's often a good idea to set this a little bit higher. Sometimes it can be a bit, you know, wonky. But let's start from the very, very top. Enter broadside below this range is currently set to 200 meters. Now, the broadside angle is the nominal broadside angle, is 75, you see here. And this is the angle that the ship will turn to whenever it gets below this range. We would like our ship to be broadsiding about maybe six or 700 meters. This gives ourselves mm, lots of room for, for launching our missiles and cannons and stuff like that, but not being too far away that we're going to have a heavy penalty to our accuracy or be outside our missiles range. Let's set this to 700. Leave broadside above this range is pretty self-explanatory. It means whenever it gets above that range from the target, it will leave its broadside and try and go directly towards its target. We're currently set to 700 and 10 because it can't go below this enter broadside angle. Let's set this to ooh, about say 900 meters. That gives a pretty big variance of about 200 meters for the ship to stay in its broadside range without having to constantly turn back to the target. 200 meters isn't a huge distance, so it should work quite well. Nominal broadside angle is currently set to 75. We have a ship that is totally capable of a full 90 degree broadside because all of the weapon systems can point in all directions. It sort of helps to have like an orbiter type thing where it constantly stays at a rough angle or rough distance from the target and goes round and round. This allows you to make the most out of the distance and distance and speed are two very, very important factors for protecting your ship. Getting too close can be a real problem. But for this, we're going to set our broadside angle to almost as high as we can. Let's go to 85. You can go to full 90, but it helps to leave a little bit of leeway. This way, it will have a five degree direction towards the target and it will constantly go towards it a little bit. Whenever it gets to this, um, the minimum broadside range that I'm about to set now, it should turn back and go back to this 700 meter range. We're gonna set the minimum range to about 600 meters. This is 100 below our broadside range. It's maybe a little low. Actually, let's set this to 500. That would probably be better because this gives like a nice 400 meter variance without getting too close. We don't approach more than half a kilometer from our target. If you want to stay further away, you can set this to one and a half kilometer. That means that whenever you get under that range, the ship will turn back and go back to the minimum broadside range. Will really help out. The idle approach distance is how close you have to get is how close the ship will approach to friendly vessels when there are no enemies nearby. Typically, I like to set this pretty damn high because my ships like to crash into each other quite a lot. You could maybe even set this higher again. It, it's one of the less important stats. The turning circle can be really hard to work out. Uh, there's no real method of uh, you know working out the distances and stuff like that. And this is the sort of minimum turning circle that your ship will pathfind with. It's currently set to 100 meters, which is pretty high. I think I'm going to leave it about that and see how it works. You can set this lower if you have a really, really agile ship. Rudders provide actually quite a lot of turning force, so this should work okay. I've already talked about the depth requirement. And that's more or less it. That's the whole AI set. And it will do as it says. It's got a lovely summary at the bottom here, and if you want to work out just what your uh, your AI is going to do, or how it's going to act, this is a lovely little description of what it's going to do, and it lays out all of these sliders into a sort of more human, understandable way, rather than having to piece all this information together in your head, it puts it into a nice little paragraph, and it's very easy to understand. 
I do strongly recommend looking at this whenever you're configuring your ship and keep checking through it to make sure the ship's going to do what you want it to do. But that's more or less it for Naval AI. Naval AI is one of the more simple AIs to configure. I do hope you enjoyed the episode. Any likes, subs or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.